A Look at Finance is underwritten by Janie Montgomery Scott, trusted advisors for generations. Welcome back to Look News Thursday. Stephen Carlton, First Vice President, Janie Montgomery Scott here with our weekly Look at Finance. Good afternoon, David. Good afternoon to you. The uh, news story everybody's talking about nationally and locally is mm -hmm. the government shutdown day 10. Yep. Of course, this is having a ripple effect across all parts of the United States, mm -hmm. as much a national and a, mm -hmm. as much a local story as it is national. Um, late breaking news today that there could be a short term deal in the works to end this yes. thing or at least get the debt ceiling expanded and then end this government shutdown. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get pushed back. Uh, Speaker of the House Boehner came out uh, this afternoon and uh, the meeting with the White House today. The, the news appears to be that we're going to push it back till after Thanksgiving. But that's the debt ceiling. Correct. Yeah. Th this is just going to extend that and that, that will prevent the shutdown for so many weeks for them to work through this. Okay. Uh, so we'll keep the government agencies that are open working and perhaps mm -hmm. come to an agreement where we can get more open and get government back working. Exactly. All right. So um, today the markets did pretty well. Pretty well. This was the second highest close okay. in the market since January. So this was a 2% rise. Shouldn't they be... That, shouldn't the markets be going the other way. We're in the middle of this government shutdown. We've got mm. this economic uncertainty, yeah. and the markets are going up. What's going on? Well, the, the the reaction was to the news that the White House, President Obama, and the Republicans under Boehner were close to coming to a deal. The news that they, that there's a possibility of a deal being signed made the market automatically react. First thing in the morning was up about 200 points, and just rallied right into the end of the day. This is really evidence that the stock market wants to see, the general market wants to see the political parties come to an agreement. And it signaled very, very strongly that they're excited about it. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's just uh, the markets that want to see the government come to uh, an agreement yeah. here. Um, uh, the rest of the world, a lot of uh, foreign countries are telling the mm -hmm. United States, it's time to get your house in order. Mm. And then constituents here in the U.S., uh, Congress's approval, below 10 percent. President Obama's approval, 37 percent. Shocking, I mean, it? well, these people no. are not doing what they were sent to Washington to do. Yeah, this, this is, the more it becomes this divisive nature, that the mo both parties being hurt by this, no question about it. You know, some of these foreign countries that are big holders of our debt, like China, for instance, asking the question, why do we hold so much U.S. Treasuries? These are dangerous, dangerous indicators to, the, to the, the stability of our government and the ability for us to issue debt. And this is not something we want to play around with. And, you know, we talked about this last week. We don't want to wait to go down to the wire. Let's get this deal signed. Let's get it extended. Let's give us some time to negotiate and come to a reasonable compromise. Are there long-term consequences of this for our markets? You know, I, th I think the, the, the biggest concern, and whether it's that you hear it from the Federal, uh, the, the Federal Reserve or you see it from the Treasury or from government, it's the amount of debt we're taking on. It's not sustainable. It affects our credit rating. It becomes a negative drag on our currency. There's all sorts of negatives by the amount, the, the amount of money we're spending as opposed to taking in. So I think that the compromise is going to have to be to get that debt under control because long term it's going to it's going to weaken our competitiveness in the global economy. Yeah, talking about that debt, but also the long-term consequences. You are a bit of a historian. Mm. When we came out of this in 95, 96, the last mm -hmm. major government shutdown, what did, right. what did we see happen then, and could we see the same happen this time around? Well, it was really interesting. Mitch McConnell, uh, President Clinton at the time, found a way to compromise. Well, uh, uh, Newt Gingrich. Newt Gingrich, I'm sorry, yeah. I spoke. Gingrich. Yeah. They, they found a way to compromise, and that market, the market rallied 15 to 20 percent right after this agreement. And think about the 90s. Everybody remember the 90s, mid-90s on through to 99. was a huge, huge rally in the market, a huge amount of wealth created. And so that stability, that predictability, that dependable uh, nature of the U.S. government and its ability to pay its debt and pay its de 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 interest on its debt, created a level of stability that helped our economy without question. So looking back to those last couple examples, it's always a positive to our economy. And Lord knows we need that positive strength for the stock market and the general economy in, you know, as a whole. We definitely do. All right, from the national picture to uh, here at home in New York State, mm. a big announcement today on nanotechnology, of course, here in our area, Global mm. Foundries, the College of Nanoscience in Albany. Um, Governor Cuomo announcing today nano. Utica. Mm. And you said to me when I said this, <laughs> Utica. <laughs> uh, yes. One and a half 
billion dollars in public-private investment hmm. um, on a major hub of nano research, mm -hmm. um, nanotech research. What they're going to do is they've got a bunch of companies that came together. Yep. Uh, they've got SUNY IT out there. They're going to come together and they're going to build a consortium mm -hmm. to um, to build uh, nano uh, technology and then, mm -hmm. of course, shop for uh, clients and mm -hmm. sell that sell those products out there. So yeah. um, a huge development. Of course, we've got it going on here, but it, expanding it to another part of the state. Well, you know, it, it's I'm always surprised by the government because sometimes the government picks unlikely winners and losers. Sometimes, but it, they've definitely had a lot of success with what's happening up in our area. Um, this, this one and a half billion, six companies getting involved. I mean, the the amount of effort to put this all together. Uh, it's very, very intriguing, and, and the placement of the university, the college being right there, there's, there's all sorts of things working to their advantage. If they can put this together and realize this, um, this just builds on New York being known as a place for cutting-edge technology. So it's very, very exciting. It's a very real opportunity. And uh, you know we're going to be watching with a lot of interest to see how it shakes out. Yeah, of course, and the one uh, major fact that we uh, that I forgot to say in my intro was a thousand new jobs, which is big for that area. I guess you know Utica. You yeah. say Utica, why? But you know Albany's so close; it's a quick mm -hmm. drive on the throughway, mm -hmm. and then you're in Utica. Of course, it'll help bolster that city's economy. Well, David, we talk about jobs and unemployment. These are a thousand well-paying jobs. These aren't jobs in the service sector that are paying minimum wage, no benefits. Typically, these are jobs that are highly compensated, and the halo effect, the amount of jobs that will be come out of those thousand, will just ripple through that area. So it's big, big news for the area, no doubt. Uh, earlier this week, we're staying with the, the nanotech uh, theme. I talked to Mike Russo. He's the director of government for Global Foundries. You may have seen that interview. There was a forum here in mm. Saratoga Springs talking about bringing manufacturing jobs back to the United States. It's the Aspen Institute, which is based in Washington, D.C. Uh, a bunch of really clever people in a room talking about mm. how we can get jobs back to the United States. But I asked Mike about mm. uh, Global Foundries in Malta. Um, they've got all the approvals now to expand that place. The expansion, he says, would actually be double what they currently, the, the actual facility would be double that. So, you know, this plant it's would massive. be massive. Yeah. Um, he says that they don't have a time mm. frame to do this. They haven't made a decision. Of course, they keep those cards close to their chest. He mm -hmm. says they're shopping for customers. Yeah, think about this. This is more of a consulting role. It's not a brick and mortar traditional manufacturing. They have cutting edge, world class manufacturing ability. They've got to go out into the industry. They've got to go out into the field and find other manufacturers that want this kind of cutting edge te technology. Same as Apple going to China for the manufacturing component. You know, we talked about Apple possibly coming to the area earlier this year, you yeah. know, there's some talk. Being able to attract those kinds of contracts will just be a guarantee to see that company explode and grow. Yeah, and last week we talked about Google who are now building their all-American phone in Texas. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's that rivalry going mm -hmm. on between New York State and Texas with the governor of Texas coming to New York to try and yeah. steal jobs back to Texas because a lot of these jobs are now coming our way. So, It's good though. This competitiveness is a good thing because the dollar's getting cheaper. We're, we're removing some of the tax hindrances, removing some of the, the, you know, the challenges that companies have to start these kinds of uh, you know, companies. This this is good signs all across the country. Definitely some difficult news, some good news. So mm -hmm. it's a bit of a mixed bag what's going on right now across. Uh, yeah, government keep your and fingers the crossed. If they get this signed, this will give us some breather going into the Christmas Thanksgiving. Holiday. All right. Yeah, the, the the current deal back to the the debt ceiling is through mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, and then they'd have to start negotiating again from there. Yeah. Ne never ending. <laughs> the, ne the never ending negotiation. Well, they're earning their paychecks, I guess. <laughs> we'll see. At least somebody's getting one in Washington right now. Stephen Carlton, First Thanks, Vice President, Jenny Montgomery. Scott, our weekly look at finance. Head to the website. It's looktvonline.com. We post it there each week for you so you can get a second look. And of course, there's a comment segment there. You can always comment on our segment. We'd love to have you get your oar in the water on some of the things that we are talking about.